morning. Let's see what's written here. The wonderful words. Okay. This is a title of a poem. Okay. Name of a poem written by Mary O'Neill. But before reciting the poem, let's play a game so that we will understand the poem in a better way. So I'm taking a word. To play this game, you only need to frame the words. You don't need the materials like indoors or outdoor games. This is a game where we are going to use the language. Uh, I have written, suppose, a word. I have written a word like, uh, let's take the Mary, name Mary. We will take the last letter. And we will frame a new word with the last letter. So Y. We will start the word with a Y. Anything like yak. And it will go on like K. Kite. E. Egg. G. Gate. E. Um, elephant. T. Tie. E. Eagle. See how many times E is coming. E. Enroll. L. Lion. N. Nest. T. Tree. E. Again. Again we have got E. Endros. E. Entitle E. Like that, when we go through the words, what you will find, sometimes you will not get a new word. So many, so many uh, times it happens. What we do? We take two, three friends of ourselves, we sit together. We sit together and we take a word. And then what we do? We take the last letter of the word. We take the last letter of the word and we start playing the game and slowly what happens we start memorizing the game, uh, words we start uh, making framing the words like that it, it, it is just so when somebody is saying a word we at once uh, check the spellings we go to the last letter and we start making a new word so this this goes on very beautifully now this is one thing that we do with a last letter now let's see if i am playing the name of a country what what the words can do i am playing the name of a country so when i'm saying the name of a country like india india the moment i say india friends those who are sitting with me my friends my classmates or when we are divided into a group for some projects or something the moment we say india so many things comes to our head it is the culture the traditions the festivals states languages children many things comes to our head okay so let's play a game with the word india and we will frame new words and these words will be only the name of the countries these words will be only the name of the countries so a okay i will write here australia okay a america a antarctica A. Alaska. A. So what we find when we start playing the things, what we find that sometimes, you know, very, very, very funny results comes out. Very, very uh, peculiar results comes out and we are stuck. We stuck. And then we feel bored also and we don't want to do it again. We say, no, this, this game we don't want to play. I'm not liking this particular game. I'm not liking it. Let's play something else. Like that, we stop doing the things. And why we stop doing the things? We stop doing the things because we are not liking it. So, 
what Mary O'Neill is saying. Mary O'Neill is saying in her poem, the wonderful words that never let a thought shrivel or die. Mary is saying, never let a thought shrivel or die. Let's write down this particular first line of the poem. Never let a thought shrivel or die for want of a way to say it. For want of a way to say it, for English is a wonderful game and all of you can play it. What the poet is saying? That English is a wonderful game. Okay? And using this particular language, all of you can play it. Means in your life, it is not playing games uh, in the ground, in the classroom, in your home and all. It is a game that you can play in your life also. This particular language will teach you how to connect yourself with the rest of the world. Because this is a universal language. You know, many countries, we have our own languages. Still, we prefer to learn English. So the poet is saying, never let a thought shrivel or die for want of a way to say it for English is a wonderful game for all of you can play it. The poet is saying everybody can play the game. Everyone can play the game. And all that you do is match the words. What you are doing in the classrooms, what you are doing in your projects, what you are doing in your assignments, what are you doing when you're in, you are in your lower classes? What are you doing? You are only, let's erase this one. You are only, what are you doing? You are only matching the words. You are only matching the words. Though so English is much more than this. That is much more than this. To the brightest thoughts in your head so that they come out clear and true. What the poet is saying? The poet is saying that in your head there are many wonderful, bright, clear thoughts are there. And you need a language. You need some words. You need those things to speak it out to others. Okay? So they come out clear and true. Your word should be very clear. Your idea should be very clear. That should not be only matching the word. It should be more than that. And handsomely groomed and fed for many of the loveliest things that never yet been said. What the poet is saying, see such a beautiful line it is. The poet is saying, and handsomely groomed and fed. Your words, you know, dresses your thoughts. Your words are your the things that makes you handsome. Okay, that is very handsomely groomed. We groom it. We, we just nourish it. We care. We take care, you know. We are taken care. Sometimes we just simply, we simply we do not speak. We just think twice. And what we do? We try to make ourselves, you know, in a beautiful way, in a handsome way. The poet is saying for many of the loveliest things, it is in your head, sitting in your head, all the beautiful and the loveliest things. And when you use the words, when you use the language, what happens? The things that you are saying, maybe no one has said earlier. No one. And that is why she is saying, for many of the loveliest things have never yet been said. But what we are doing, the thoughts are inside. It is dying inside us. We are frightened to speak. We are thinking so much that our ideas, our words, 
our ish emotions our feelings everything is you know just vanishing from us it comes like a flame and it goes and we are not saying it we are not thinking about it words are the food and dress of thought words are there if you do not have the word then what kind of language you are having my dear so words are your food and dress of thought what we do we take a, a, a topic and then we nourish it with beautiful words we we nourish it with great words fabulous words and we make our saying a very great and a grand one sometimes you know the things are said in such a simple way that it is very easy to understand and sometimes we dress it in such a complicated way that it is very difficult to understand so words are your thoughts you know words are your food words are your food and words are the dress for your thoughts they give its body and swing you know they swing they take you up your imaginations your word power your your uh, inner desires what you have thought your um, uh, aspirations your dreams everything you give the words and it goes up like a swing and if you don't give it properly it comes down also so what the poet is saying the poet is saying that the food okay food and dress food and dress what are the food and dress words words are the words are the food and dress of the thoughts words are the food okay these are the food food and dress these these words are the food and dress of the thought it gives you a swing it takes you up it takes your imagination up and everyone's longing dear to hear you don't know sometimes you think why why i will say these things for whom i will say these things no maybe there are in this world near and dear one of yours maybe people around you they are simply waiting that you will say something something you will say which is very wonderful very great something which you will say they, that is very relaxing that is very soothing that is very soul reviving something you will say so people are there to listen to you some fresh and beautiful things what they are waiting for they are waiting for all the fresh air very fresh no so why the poet is saying never never let a thought shrivel or die you are thinking that is not important maybe that particular word is very much important for some of the other people then why are you keeping it with yourself why are you hiding it in secrecy you know let it out speak it out but only words can free a thought or oh, sometimes what happens you do not have the words also you know many things but you are sitting at the back bench and there is a deep feeling inside i could have said this one i could have done better but you are sitting there you know why because whatever thought inside is there you are not using the proper words to dress it you are not using the proper word from its prison behind your eyes inside 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 your heart and the you know it's in your eyes you can see now what do you have to do you have to make others see those words you have to show them that what are your ideas maybe your mind on holding now a marvelous new surprise what the poet is saying again the poet is saying that when i'm talking also maybe i'm talking to you maybe you are listening now maybe you are watching the videos while watching this one only maybe some new ideas are coming to you maybe some new words are coming maybe i am saying but the, there are maybe new words with you maybe you are thinking much more better than me huh? maybe you are dressing your thoughts in much more 
beautiful giving beautiful words which are much more healthier food and which are much more fashionable clothes maybe your words are much more fashionable than me much more better than me so mary o'neil is saying english is a very beautiful game english is a very beautiful language you know if you are going to learn it then you can do many of the things and for that what you have to do you have to speak the words you have to frame the sentences you have to share your thoughts and you have to give dress and food they are the words and they will turn your thoughts so beautiful that it will be like a swing which goes up and comes down and showing the hope that it will go up again i hope dear students uh, i was um, quite uh, uh, able to explain the poem which is which is written by mary o'neil okay the poet has whenever a poet, poet is writing a poem or a writer is writing some piece of writing they have their own versions and they have their own thoughts and uh, i i think that i am uh, uh, able to make you understand so i am reading the poem once again the wonderful words written by mary o'neil never let a thought shrivel or die for want of a way to say it for english is a wonderful game and all of you can play it all that you do is match the words to the brightest thoughts in your head so that they come out clear and true and handsomely groom and fed for many of the loveliest things have never been yet said words are the food and dress of thought they give it its body and swing and every one's longing today to hear some fresh and beautiful things but only words can free a thought only words can free a thought from its prison behind your eyes maybe your mind is on holding now a marvelous new surprise hope you have enjoyed this poem okay you can find this poem uh, in your textbooks this is a uh, book from uh, the educators okay the dew drops this is a piece of uh, writing uh, by mary o'neil thank you for uh, listening it thank you for watching it and i hope in future also you will give the same response what you have given all these days thank you dear spectators thank you dear students